In the beginning, we find that Satan was so beautiful to he deceived angels. And he was the most beautiful angel of all of them. Show his ladies to the devil. that bringing in an altar and making it real pretty for worship, that's what God would respect. They say, think the same thing today. So if God disrespects worship, sincerity, sacrifice, Cain was just as just as Abel. But it was by revelation that he understood that it was not apples that his parents eat. Do you know the fall came by women at the beginning and fall, the end is going to wind up the same way? Women coming into authority and ruling over man and so forth. You know the scripture says that? You know the day that she puts on man's clothes and bobs her hair? All those things are contrary to God's word. And you know she represents the church? When you watch what women are doing, you'll see what the church is doing. That's exactly right. It's the old horror and daughters of Revelation 17 given to the poor, blind, miserable people her doctrine of theology contrary to the word of God and they found there the souls of slaves and men and women of, of everywhere. Instead of attracting the people, Christ does, vindicates his word which attracts the people. He don't attract the people. The church isn't attracted by big denominations and big uh, doings and great big carry-ons and fancy things, but the word of God attracts the bride of Christ. Now, Notice, it's interesting to, to notice how the, that the church tries to attract the attention of the people by buying robes and dress choirs and bobbed haired women and painted faces. And they think it is sign like an angel, lie like a devil, run around all night to dance like, uh, think nothing about it. And that's what they think is all right, that's beautiful. But you see, that's false made. That's not the word of God. While the true bride attracts the attention of God by keeping his word. Now notice. Now let us notice Christ. They say, well now, wait a minute. What about this beauty you're talking about? The Bible said in Isaiah 53, 2, that when Jesus come, there was no beauty of him that we should desire. Is that right? There's no beauty. If he would have come in the worldly beauty as Satan is today, the people would have run around him and accepted him the way they do the church today. They would have believed him, received him, as they do Satan today. Certainly they would. But he didn't come in that kind of a beauty. But he always comes in the beauty of character. There, Christ wasn't a beautiful, great, strong, stout man. God doesn't choose that kind. Stop just a minute, man. Look at your your creeds that you serve. Look in your churches. Is it just exactly with the Word of God? Have you met every qualification say, I'm a good man, so was Nicodemus, and so was all the rest. They, they were fine. See, that don't have nothing to do with it. And women, I want you to look in the mirror and look what God requires a woman to do. And see in God's mirror, not your church mirror. In God's mirror. And see if you could qualify in your life the spiritual bride of Jesus Christ. Ministers think the same. Do you cut corners here to save somebody's feelings over yonder? Would you do this if it wasn't, if they put you out of the church? If you are feeling that way, my dear brother, let me warn you in the name of Jesus Christ, flee from that right now. And lady, if you can't measure up to the qualification of a Christian, not as a nominal Christian, but in your heart, and your life is patterned exactly like God's marriage certificate here says it has to be. And church member, if your church isn't like that, can measure up to God's qualification of his word, get out of it and get into Christ. That's solemn warning. We don't know what time, you don't know what time that this city one day is going to be laying out here at the bottom of this ocean.
Oh, Capernaum, said Jesus, thou who exalted into heaven will be brought down into hell. For if the mighty works had been done in Sodom and Gomorrah, it had been standing to this day. And Sodom and Gomorrah lays in the bottom of the Dead Sea and Capernaum's in the bottom of the sea. Thou city who claims to be the city of the angels, who has exalted yourself into heaven and sent all the dirty, filthy things, the fashions, the things, the, even the foreign countries come here to pick up our filth and send it away. Through your fine churches and steeples and so forth the way you do, remember one day you will be laying in the bottom of this sea. You're a great honeycomb under you right now. The wrath of God is belching right beneath you. How much longer you'll hold this sandbar hanging out over that, on that ocean out under a mile deep will slide in there, come back to the salt and sea. It'll be worse than the last day of Pompeii. Repent, Los Angeles. Repent the rest of you and turn to God. The hour of his wrath is upon the earth. Flee while there's time to flee. Come into Christ. Thank you. 